Hey guys, Derek Best, Beacon Fight for Life. As you most likely have heard, or if you haven't heard, what we're about at the Beacon Fight for Life is reconnecting the Australian multicultural community. Our main goal is to reduce the number of Australians taking their own life in Australia. Currently, suicide is the leading cause of death of all Australians 15 to 44 for men. Uh, Indigenous people are three times likely to take their own life, and, and it's sad to say that 65,000 people a year in Australia attempt suicide. So the Beacon Fight for Life, we want to reduce the number of people taking their own life, and so what we're going to, we're going to play over the coming months is some footage of conversations I've had with individuals, groups, multicultural, you name it, I'll interview them, so that we can start to make inroads for people um, to stop them from taking their own life give them information and places to reach out to. So, stay tuned. Hi guys, Derek Best, Beacon Fight for Life. I'm fortunate again to be joined by Ema Quigley. Thank you, Ema, for joining me today. Thank you. Uh, we're going to hit some of the hard subjects and today we're going to talk about youth suicide. Now, Ema has been uh, in mental health and psychology for 20 years, so I don't. I think you've, you'd be able to form a strong opinion yeah. um, on on the subject that we're talking about. And just so I go back a little bit, where the Beacon Fight for Life, what we're aiming to do is to educate the communities about suicide prevention with education, um, so that we can reduce the number of Australians taking their own life, or number of people in Australia taking their own life. Uh, Ema. How do kids even know about suicide? I mean, or, or about taking their own life? Because as a kid growing up, I didn't even know it was a thing. I didn't even know it was an option. I'd never even heard of, heard of suicide or anyone taking their own life. Yeah. How do they know? So developmentally, children understand the concept of death when they're nine, around nine years of age. And suicide forms part of that understanding. And because I guess the suicide rate has increased so much over time, mm. it's more talked about, it's more in our awareness. Uh, a child's understanding of death, dying, suicide will be informed by what they're exposed to on TV, in movies, on games that they play, video games, books they read. So that's also going to have an impact and that's changed dramatically uh, since we were kids. Yeah. Okay. So what would get a child to, to their tipping point? Are their tipping points the same as an adult? I mean, do children have or kids have um, even the emotional development that mm. an adult does? Yeah. So in terms of the emotional development, our brains are continuing to develop till we're about 25 years old. So you can see that through youth, there's going to be a lower capacity to problem solve, to regulate emotion, um, planning things, uh, seeing different alternatives to problems uh, and so that develops slowly until we're about 25 and so there is a difference mm. uh, and in terms of the tipping points Derek I think the tipping points are similar they're going to be those stressful points in life but what is important for young people is the impact it has on them so we know that um, in during adolescence peers are really important, family becomes less important, our friends become more important. And so if there's a tipping point around having an argument with your best friend, a breakup in a relationship, that may have a greater impact on a young person than it might have on somebody who's in their 30s, 40s, 50s. Yeah. Okay. Um, how can we help, how as a community can we help our kids? There's so many different theories. I mean, when I was a, a kid growing up, um, if you did something wrong, you got a smack on the bum. You learn about respect. And you certainly weren't in your bedroom playing on devices. You were outside playing in the park, yep. skating on your skateboard, yep. playing to your mates in the street. Um, I mean, today, kids get awards for coming last. Mm. Do you think that we're going wrong with our uh, upbringing? Yeah, I think if we look at the risk factors which makes somebody more likely during youth to have a mental health issue to end up having suicidal thoughts, that can help us to figure out what we can do for our young people. Yep. So we know that if a young person has a mental health condition and it's untreated, that they will be at higher risk 
of ending their life by suicide. So what we want to do is then get young people into early intervention. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the greatest organizations in Australia, uh, national organizations, is Headspace. I don't know if you've heard of Headspace yeah, I have before. Actually heard of them, yes. Yeah, so Headspace is a completely free confidential service for young people between the ages of 12 and 25 so it covers quite a range of ages and they can go there and they can get counseling they can join certain groups um, there's particular groups for lgbtiq plus people so it's a very inclusive environment um, and those kind of initiatives and you know skate parks like this places where young people can get out connect with each other feel like they're having a meaningful contribution to society can really help Spending less time on devices? Yeah, I think um, monitoring device time, which has been really hard when we've had lockdowns because mm. parents have been home working, kids uh, have been home from school, so it's been di a difficult time for everybody. Just for the audience, uh, does Headspace, if, we're, if it, would a parent be contacting Headspace or the children directly be contacting Headspace? Yeah, so that can go either way. So parents can ring Headspace. Uh, the website is amazing, headspace.org.au. They've got a whole load of resources there for parents, for young people and for health professionals and for anybody like yourself can go on just learn more about youth mental health and, and youth issues. If a child was being, um, had, had situations at home that they couldn't talk to their family, they can go directly to Headspace? Yeah, yeah. So Headspace will, um, in most circumstances, be able to see a child for therapy. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thanks, Eva. Thank you. That's it, guys. Uh, thanks again for joining in. That's Derek Best speaking Fight for Life, and make sure you take the time to smile today. Thank you.